the RPG-7. To reload it, you have to put the rocket all the way in. The rockets create a full physics explosion. And of course, you can use it to rocket jump. It's cool just seeing all the physics interact when you create an explosion. SW's camera mod lets you place down a camera. If you change your spectator to none, you can then see yourself through that camera. You can also place down a handheld camera. If you use the weld gun, you can then attach it to something and then pick it up. You can extrapolate this and basically attach it to anything, like this go-kart to get a really cool angle. We can do the same thing with a shotgun and create some really cinematic shots. This was the first camera mod for Bone Lab. It was absolutely fantastic. The GoPro gives you a camera that you can actually grip and move around. There's a second camera that gives you a preview of what you're looking at. This one's a lot easier to attach to things and you can remove it with the utility gun. I'll be using this a lot during this mod showcase. The Desert Eagle uses medium ammo and it's one of my favorites. The reload animation and bolt is super satisfying. This 100% save file means you unlock absolutely everything. It means you can start enjoying the sandbox without spending an hour trying to unlock a soup can. There's no Spider-Man mod in Bone Lab yet, but these grapplers are the next best thing. You can fly around like Spider-Man and they do have some pull to them. This is one of my favorite mods and it's just an incredible amount of fun just getting to be Spider-Man. You can fly around the maps and just get around really quickly. This mod brings up a menu and then lets you change the gravity to different planets. The controls are really easy to use. You push on the left thumbstick to open the menu and you can navigate with the right thumbstick. To select, you press on the right trigger. It's a lot of fun just flying around with less gravity and watching all the physics object interact with each other. Ford didn't seem to enjoy it too much. It's pretty cool that everything still works with less gravity. A spawnable launch pad that launches the player and any other physics objects. It comes in two variants, one that doesn't move, that's static, and one that you can move. It's great to use as a launch pad to just send things across the map. The launch is a lot larger if you have a lighter avatar or object. Bearings brings a whole range of mechanical objects into the game. I had to use it to just try and build a car. It's a bit of a shame that things like this aren't in the base Bone Lab game. It was a success and I was able to build a fully working car. You can also spawn some with a controller to turn on and off. I made a windmill. The wheels and bearings come in every size you need. The MP7 is a really cool gun and it uses light ammo. The bolt push is really cool. As always, silenced weapons are super satisfying. This mod brings lightsabers into Bone Lab. These are very cool and they even light up the surrounding environment. They absolutely nailed the sound effects on these. There's over 40 lightsabers in the collection. This is a must have mod. Some blade and sorcery dismemberment would have got a long way in Bone Lab. They come in basically every color you want. I could just ignite them all day.
Need ammo? Well, the ammo bot has you covered. It's got unlimited ammo and a really cool design with custom effects. A hamster ball that comes in three different sizes. They're fun to just push down the hill. You can also get in them. You stay upright though when you're going down the hill. I got the Nimbus gun out and started flying around in them. This would be a pretty weird sight to see. And of course you can put NPCs in. A meatball with a 30cm diameter. It's very meaty and I just attached it to this swing. The menu skipper just takes you straight to the Bone Lab hub. It skips that extra step you usually have to do, going to the main menu and then to the hub. The achievement unlocker unlocks every single achievement on Steam. I don't really care about Steam achievements, but it's pretty cool that you can just unlock them all. The Dodge Charger is a really cool car. It features a hood, a door, and a trunk that are fully openable. All the seats in the car work as well, so if you're playing multiplayer, your friends can get in. It's great to have other vehicles in Bone Lab. A fully working chainsaw. It features a spinning blade, an impaling slash head slicing, and an interaction sound effect. You turn it on by pressing the trigger while holding the cord, and you can turn it off by pressing the eject button while holding the starter cord. Infinite ammo, so you never have to run out. It can be quite annoying having to constantly spawn ammo boxes every time you play Bone Lab, but this mod fixes that issue. The Spaz 12. The Sega 12K. It's a semi-automatic pattern shotgun. It also comes in a reflex sight variant. The M4A1 by Rexmech. You'll be seeing a lot of their mods throughout their showcase. Beautifully made gun and the colors are a nice touch. You can use Rexmech's attachments mod on all his weapons. Rex Mex Gun Attachment Mod. You have a whole range of attachments you can add to your weapon. They automatically come off when you bring one close to it. They work on all the mod creator's weapons. You can fully pimp out your gun. The Colt M1911A1. Beautiful 3D model and it was the mod creator's first pistol. The Old Betsy minigun with spin. It makes it easier to mow down enemies without having to reload. You can also use it to make you fly. Cloud's Buster Sword from Final Fantasy VII. Instant 42 boxes of ammo. It's a bit of a pain spamming the trigger to get ammo boxes. This completely solves that problem. You just have to walk into it once and then you'll never run out of ammo. The enemy wave spawner adds nine spawnable buttons, which when pressed will spawn waves of various enemies and ammo, so you don't run out. It's great having a battle on any map whenever you want. You don't have to spawn each enemy type individually. To end the wave, you just have to press the button. Crablet pets spawn friendly crablets that will follow you around the map. They're ultra cute and they come in most colors. Other enemies will attack them, but they don't seem to attack anyone. The gravity shifter is a tool that can be used to swap the gravity of any location. It features many popular locations from the solar system like the sun and the moon.
This features a fully working car in Bone Lab. It comes in three main variants, a normal car, a fast car, and the faster car. I tried attaching a gun to the car, but it was too far so I couldn't reach it. Golf cart is the easiest vehicle to drive in Bone Lab. You can drive around and do some donuts. The spawnable EDA-22 pistol. It comes in the red variant and of course the yellow variant. These look beautiful in the campaign so it's great having them in the sandbox as well. It's a shame other Bone Lab guns don't come with unlockable skins. The FN-509. It comes with a flashlight variant as well. The 5.7 comes with a normal variant and a flashlight variant. An STG-44. This one reminds me of Dare Reese from Call of Duty Zombies. Kylo Ren's lightsaber. Mario and Luigi's carts from Mario Kart. Cool to drive around. I can't wait for somebody to make a power-ups mod, like in Mario Kart. Gravity Apollo turns gravity into whatever direction the Apollo is facing. As always, it's just great seeing all the physics objects interact with each other. With enough practice, you can just use it to make yourself fly. It made me feel like Superman. The AR-15 and M4 pack comes with a whole range of guns. The way the bolt works on this weapon is super beautiful. The Tech 9 uses light ammo and it's a really fun gun to play around with. Functional Seats brings a whole range of chairs, couches and even a couch with wheels. You can sit on it and exit it. It's great having a vehicle that just works and you don't have to build from scratch. I use the chair and the constrainer to make a swing. The Iron Giant is huge and really strong. It doesn't come across as well on the camera, but you can really feel the scale of being big. The NPCs actually feel like ants, and it's a lot of fun. It seems a bit bizarre to me that Stress Level Zero didn't make a giant level where you're just a giant like this. It seems like the avatars were really built for it. Another one of my favourites, this Crablet avatar lets you be a Crablet. It's quite comical and you can really see the scale difference when you're in the headset. The only thing I would want for this mod is a super jump feature. I just found this super hilarious for some reason. Here we have the Hulkbuster mod from the Avengers. This one's a bit smaller than the Iron Giant, but still a ton of fun to play around with. You can just throw forwards around the world.
These giant avatars are just incredible. A very detailed Deadpool skin. A Captain Marvel avatar. Dune 044 avatar. This is one of my favourites. It looks especially cool in the dark. Ellie from The Last of Us Part 2. Ford, but his hands are comically large. It's pretty hilarious trying to use a gun and normal items with it. Surprisingly, it's not even that clunky. The Black Mesa Hazard suit from Half-Life. It also comes with a helmet variant. A range of Dead Space Engineer suit. It features every upgradable part. I'm a massive fan of Dead Space 1 and 2, so it was great to actually jump into this. I want a Dead Space Triple A VR game so bad. Extra good climber gives you really long hands, making climbing very easy. You can just reach your hands over things and it actually removes all the clunkiness of traditional climbing. I'd imagine this is what it feels like to be a monkey. Master Chief from Halo 3. The Half-Life Alex Avatar Pack. It currently features the Combine OTA Grunt and the Headcrab Zombie. The developer said they'll be adding more soon. I love the avatars that completely change the way you interact with the world. Two Spider-Man avatars from the Sam Raimi trilogy. The Terminator T-800 pack comes with a whole range of Terminator skins. Terminator 2 is one of my favourite movies of all time, so it was great seeing the T-800 in 3D. A Batman Avatar. The Boneworks Nullbody. It was great getting to be the Nullbody from Boneworks after playing it for so long. The transparent hands are so cool. A buff Arthur Ford. Looks like he's been hitting the gym too much. Stanley Parable is an incredible customer. Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Ah, yes, truly a... I never played the Stanley Parable, so it was great getting to play it in Bone Lab. The voice work and implementation is just fantastic. You can see the whole level here. And some random NPC I found. Construct. My favourite map from Gary's Mod. The secret room is enterable. There's lots of sandbox gadgets ready to go at spawn. And the outdoors features an ambient loop. The water seemed to be a physical object. You can no clip through it though. Just thought I'd jump in and get some climbing in. It's great having a huge cliff to send Ford off. Seven Eleven from one of the most popular Gmod maps. It features opening doors. An underground section that's still a work in progress.
I climbed on top of the building and I was trying to get a ball in the hoop. It was quite a challenge though. I ended up hitting the camera somehow. Just taking a simple shot was much easier. There's also a mirror. There's a racetrack on the map but it's a bit dark so I put some flashlights on my go-kart. There's a cool racetrack you can drive up and there's a great hill towards the end. A vapor world is a vaporwave style level for sandboxing. This map is just absolutely beautiful. Hotel Room was inspired by the Gary's Mod map Elevator Source. It features a nav mesh, optimization, a spawn gun, volumetrics, and high quality models. Grassland Ramps is a map with a hill that has a ramp on the end of it. It's fun just to play around with the physics. And of course, ride down the hill. Couldn't resist getting on the shopping trolley. Nuketown from Call of Duty Black Ops 1. This takes me all the way back to 2012. Labworks is a port from Boneworks to Bone Lab. It features the museum basement campaign level. Well done on such a fantastic implementation on port. I can't wait till I can play the whole campaign in Bone Lab.
Woohoo Island from Wee Fit. In this explorable island of sandbox fun, you can make some new memories and remember some old memories you've had on this island. It is an absolutely huge sandbox you can play around with and do whatever you want on. I got started just driving around on the go-kart. Of course the bridge is there and you can do whatever you want on it. That includes throwing Ford off. I thought I would get him to do some bungee jumping as well. There's a giant volcano in the middle as well. We can jump off the top in a tube and slide all the way down. Big city from Gmod. Why not get some city driving in while we have the chance? I just cannot wait for a Spider-Man mod. Blood Gulch from Halo Combat Evolved. Halo CE was one of the first games I got into, so it was incredible seeing this map in full 3D. Damn, it just really makes me want a fully supported Bone Lab multiplayer. The bases are fully detailed and you can go in and explore them. It's no warthog, but you can drive around with a go-kart. Endless Tunnel is a great map to jump on and kill some enemies. Bone Day Jewel Thief is a small adventure map inspired by Payday. There are some really cool custom scripting events like the key towards the end. You think we're gonna see some robbers tonight? <laughs> Are you crazy? No one would ever try breaking into this place. It's got top of the line security. <laughs> the voice acting is amazing, and I was really not expecting that. I wouldn't help you. You collect this key and then you can use it to open the door. Then we get straight into a climbing section.
rookie, you've made it this far, but the failsafe activated and you're locked in this room. But don't worry, I thought of everything. Had an insider stash some C4 in this room. Just pick it up, place it on a crumbly looking wall, and then take cover. The full map from GTA San Andreas. I have a lot of fun memories playing this on PS2. It is absolutely huge and the sky's the limit. You can just mess around with the physics. I wanted to get forward doing some bungee jumping again. I couldn't resist building a gigantic swing. I'm addicted to using the constrainer. I then went to drive around and eventually build a hovercraft. The ball on the front makes it much easier to control. There's also a quest version that runs a lot better. The graphics are really downgraded, but it does the job. Minecraft Village. How good is the Minecraft music? It just takes me right back. I would love an official Minecraft VR game, but it doesn't seem like that's going to happen anytime soon. Time to do some trick shots. The Infinite Arena, an arena mod where enemies will infinitely spawn. There are two maps and it's a lot of fun just killing enemies without having to spawn them with the utility gun. You can choose a loadout and then decide if you want headcrabs or not. The map is also really fun to jump around on and there's a good gap between the jumping distances. Turns out headcrabs don't make good weapons. Hightower is ported directly from Team Fortress 2. You can tell by the insane level of detail. It's fun just exploring and looking around. Of course, you can always just jump in and kill some enemies. Mellow is an upcoming custom mini campaign for Bone Lab. The developer is continuing to update it, adding new features as the modding SDK expands. It's currently just a preview, but it was a lot of fun going around. The reason you're seeing two cameras is because I couldn't get the fisheye camera working on this map. This light puzzle solving was really cool. It's amazing what the mothers are able to do with such a limited SDK.
Rainbow Road is a port of one of the best maps in Mario Kart 64. It's a lot of fun driving around and it brings back some really good memories. With a proper modding SDK, including full support for code mods, it would just be insane what people would be able to create. Project Liminal is a really cool map featuring the back rooms. It's cool to just explore the really eerie vibe. The lighting looks especially cool on this map. The sandbox map is a work in progress and for me, I think it completely glitched out. That said, it created this really cool effect. I enjoyed just playing around with the cool lighting. Last resort from Halo 3 also known as Zanzibar from Halo 2. I'm a massive Halo fan. I see Halo, I have to download it. it. Was really cool jumping and seeing this map in 3D for the first time. It was fun just exploring and just seeing everything in 3D. I have so many hours on this map in Halo 3. Wipeout is a fun, very difficult physics parkour map. Definitely download this one if you're on a parkour challenge. I just failed miserably at this one, but I'm sure with a lot of practice you'd get better. It's very cool how the developer has gotten each part of this actually working. And this water effect looks really cool on the ground. Skate 3 is one of my all-time favourite games of all time. I remember I broke my leg in high school and I just played through Skate 3 non-stop on my Xbox 360. I was expecting just the university section, so it was a massive surprise when the entire Skate 3 game is actually on this map. The closest thing to a skateboard I've found is this bone tube mod. I could spend hours just sliding down ramps with it, and this map is just perfect for it. A port from the original map from TF2. It's a stylized cartoon city. It's fun to explore around and look at all the different colors. And once you're done looking around, you can get killing some enemies. A green screen map created by me. I'm going to use this to make a mixed reality video at some point.